um, there is no a need to go into TX, so um, we will close the meeting. Oh, oh, sorry, I forgot the notice of motion. <laughs> It doesn't look like a, a one of the other papers, sorry. <laughs> I'll move to the notice of motion. Councillor Jake McClellan, would you like to move your motion? Yep, happy to move. Yep. And do I have a seconder for it? Melanie Coker. Right, I'll hand it over. So introduce the do you... Uh, oh, I, I was just gonna... You introduce the... Introduce the um, the paper. Okay, or I'll okay, sure. Um, and then well, if there are questions, we'll take questions and, and then, then I'll straight open into the debate, debate and then yeah. close. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so this notice of motion um, was put together by Councillor Coker and myself, obviously to address um, some of the barriers um, that people people face when uh, trying to learn how to swim. Um, it's pretty broad. It's self-explanatory. Um, and, and basically, at this stage, we're just asking for a staff investigation. So staff can go away. They've got a year to do this work. And, um, and as you can see, they can explore any and all options to achieve the optimal outcome, to achieve the goal that we want, which is making sure that Christchurch is a world leader and has the best access for people to learn and be comfortable around water. Very good. Has anyone got any questions of Jake? Sam. Um, just just one. Uh, is it intended that, uh, like it's, you know, good on you for bringing it through, is it intended that um, this additional cost will be found within existing budgets? I think that's obviously a decision for our annual plan process next year. All that's intended here is that we look at all options we can, right. we, we have. Right. And then, so is there a reason it, it didn't come earlier so it could be part of this annual plan? I'm just conscious. I guess the public expectation is that we're going to go and offer it, but actually it's at least 18 months away? Well, I mean, the, the notice of motion is quite clear in what it does and doesn't ask for. Um, I mean, I, I, I would be really interested in exploring any, any quick wins to, to, to push through in this annual yeah. plan, but really that my I was cognizant of making sure that staff had the time to do an adequate yeah. investigation. I, yeah, I guess it was like, how come it didn't come last year so they had time for this? Oh, because I thought of it this year. Oh, right, okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> Well, I th I th it, it, it's arisen out of the number of drownings that have been. Yeah, that's yeah. the way I've read it. But my question is is that we've got a number of private providers that provide um, swim lessons, uh, learn to swim. So um, how, how would they feature in this report? I think it's inherent. I mean, staff are uh, uh, being emboldened to investigate um, what, what is quite a broad broad scope here. And, um, and obviously that existing capacity within our city should be looked at. Um, uh, to achieve the to achieve the goal, uh, it's the goal that matters above all. Right. So noting that the council is a provider of swimming for facilities can play a key role doesn't mean that they play all the role. We don't play um, all the roles. Right. Yeah. right cool. Um, Aaron and then Celeste. Yeah, and I, I don't want my uh, question to sound insensitive, but it's genuine. What is the problem we're trying to solve? Who's sitting in front? Um, I'm happy to restate it. Uh, just the uh, apparent level of drowning in, in, in New Zealand and, and really making sure that children are, have the ability, if they don't otherwise, to access swimming lessons. So, when, and uh, yep, I, I get that, but it says the unacceptably high rates of drowning in New Zealand, that's compared to what? Or other. And yeah, well, true, fair, fair point. Too high. We, we take a, we take a zero death approach to, to a road toll as, as well, um, and we don't just say, "Oh, look, this is acceptable." Therefore, we won't worry about safety interventions. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'll save it for the debate. Yep, uh, Celeste. Yeah, sorry. Um, in terms of the free swimming lessons, um, I know that there are. There is some targeted funding from central government for low decile schools, as I understand. It would seem to me that it would be a good use of our resources to look at, I think, following on from Aaron's point, what the barriers are to people accessing swimming lessons so it can be included in the report. Um, 
to find out where that money's best spent because my sense would be, without getting the information, would be there'd be sort of people with less resources, time as well, to take their kids for swimming lessons might be the barrier. So giving free swimming lessons to everyone might not solve That's the right. bigger problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so, but it, I just think it might be helpful to kind of there's, there's by the barriers as yeah, well as there's, just there's, saying we want free. Correct, and that's what the staff report will do. There's pros and cons with um, both targeted and universe, universal support, but but again, that's what the report will give us those options to decide. Yeah. Also, how much we want to pay and, and how much we want to do. Because yeah. it, do, it doesn't say identify the barriers, it says address the barriers, and I'm not sure that we're clear what the barriers are, so hopefully that'll come out of the report. I should hope so. Yeah, I, I think uh, people people are looking at that word, you know, like the, the report will cover the following, but it, it's really only an, includes a look at the following as part of that wider question. So, yeah. yeah, it's just making sure that the following is looked at. Yeah, yeah. So as long as, long as we're very clear that this is about what 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 is going to be included in the report, it's not the whole report which needs to look at the the barriers because um, it notes that a range of barriers, both financial and otherwise, exist. So, yeah. Thanks for making that point. Um, yeah. Sam. Yes, sorry, just one more, Jake, around the... Um, it was following on from Leanne's question about the private providers. So will this exclude them, or are we proposing that the council would pay them to provide swimming lessons for free? We're not excluding them, but we're not proposing that either. But there, there's no reason to think that that consideration could, couldn't be part of the report. Okay, so the council could end up paying private providers for swimming lessons, so it's, that yeah, it's it's not excluded. And in, in, in yeah, oh, I was just trying to pick up your intent though. Is it is it just free lessons at swimming pools that we own, or is it literally because uh, it talked about you know the barriers and, and the like around locations? It's really we would be what's, what's feasible. Private. I think um, there may be some scale up problems that council might be able to have that that accessing. You know, if that's what's required to get the job done, then that's what's required. But really, it's about making sure that that everyone has the opportunity to access those swimming okay. So that could could include. Yeah, it could end up. I mean, the, well, the, 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 it's just the what is practical I raised and most the practical. Private providers was yeah. that I was concerned that there would be capacity issues either way. You know, yeah. if we if we um, provided all of the swimming lessons that we currently provide for free, when we don't provide them all for free now, um, you know, does yeah. that? Well, well, yeah, and what 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 Jake's saying, if I've got it correct, is that if this was to proceed in eighteen months' time, that would occur. But also, we would be offering free swimming lessons at private providers. No, he's oh. saying that the report that's, will, just, will cover said. that. That's literally what he's just said. No, he I've said just said that, that the report, report won't exclude it. that as a possibility. So yeah, it, it, it's whether it's one. I mean, it, it's not making the decision about the outcome at the front end. It's saying let's have all yeah. of the options on the table. Yeah, which so is what we legally is on the have. Table, right? That's, what, that's table. what we legally yeah. have to do yeah. when we're. No, I was just because it's not clear there. I just wanted to get a clear understanding that we would potentially be paying private providers for free swimming lessons for students. So, um, I think that would be that would be an unfortunate representation yeah. of today's debate because it is. We've I, just had I it simply we've literally just had I that simply raise the question of private providers. Yeah on the basis that decisions that we make here, or you make here, um, will be um, uh, potentially impact on their business model um, and all sorts of things. So you've got to look at all of the options. So, And we have had discussions around um, private providers in other instances, like um, Central City Car Parking, where we didn't fund um, the private providers, although we funded our own provision of free parking in the mm. in the council um, facilities. So there is a precedent for only funding um, uh, public facilities, uh, and but but to not have the impact on private providers included in the report would not be a good enough I, report. Yeah, I think we're talking across council. purposes. I'm I'm happy for the impact. But it's around the fact that the council may pay the private providers. I no. would, I would, I actually think that that would be a misrepresentation of the debate we're having today. So that's I'm, that's what I'm, I'm simply saying. saying. Well, it's not a deb I, I'm literally asking a question. It's, right. I'm, I'm sorry if you've interpreted that as debate. We'll no, because that, that what what we're asking for is a report to come back to council. 
So we are not making a decision on anything that is going to be contained in that report today other than the costs yeah. of these will be included. That's, that's my understanding of where we got to. Um, Aaron, Sarah. Yeah, yeah. just the move it. Um, yeah, g going back to the, um, the problem we're solving and Celeste's point around the target, do, do the mover a second to know what percentage of people in Christchurch don't have access to swimming lessons and ha the percentage that aren't or can't swim? No. So we don't know that number? I, I, think, no. that, I think the reason that we're considering this um, in the way that it's worded is that there is uh, quite a lot of background work that needs to be done on building um, a case for or against this particular proposal. Um, and, you know, perhaps if, if... I mean, I don't get to write people's notices of motion, and um, I personally would have constructed it slightly differently in order to achieve that outcome. But it is what it is. It's in front of us now, and I'd like us to... Um, get to the debate on it. Right, uh, Sarah. Thanks for that. Hey, listen, a, a, a couple of things. Um, firstly, in the past, I mean, I completely get where you're coming from. The drowning rates are, are awful. We need to, as a society, do something. In the past, we've had some concerns around council taking on um, financial responsibility and responsibility for areas that are actually um, government ones through a different agency. So the Ministry for Education has a um, a health and physical education curriculum which um, says it expects that all students will have had opportunities to learn have aquatic skills by the end of year six which is about 11 years old yeah. um, it's clear that that's not resourced properly at the moment um, and that it's not that, that the kids aren't getting enough and I'm some wondering whether um, you'd be open to adding a resolution about writing to the ministry about our concerns around that um, um, no no um, I mean, again, it's similar to it's similar to um, Council McDonald's question, which I can only restate that that isn't excluded in the notice of motion. I mean, government have a role, um, and then that they currently already you know provide provide um, provide some support. And again, if staff want to explore that, just like anything, they can be free to discount or explore whatever they want. I was just thinking that you know writing a letter would be you know, a relatively quick and easy thing to do that wouldn't necessarily need a report. Yeah, I'll, I'll write to the Minister anyway. Okay. On a separate matter. Ministry Thanks. already Separately. funds... I don't, um, I don't so need a resolution to write to the Minister. Ministry so. funds schools to, to learn to swim. Well, they fund the curriculum, and the curriculum says that, and the curriculum also includes... Um, this is section. the debate. I mean, I... I no, I've got a question based on this, yeah. which is identifying risks and, um, and, and describing safe practices to manage them. So one of the key things is that... It's not necessarily pools that are the issue, and it's not necessarily children. So actually, most of the drownings in New Zealand happen from adults who had access to school pools way back when, um, and in our rivers and in our beaches. And I'm just wondering if council um, could do something in the space of additional um, education and hazard identification stuff at our beaches and rivers. Um, because it's that, no, no, this is only about swim lessons. And people die, even if they know how to swim, because of the hazards that are present in our natural environment as opposed to in pools. And, and the choices they make. And that's right. And so being able to clearly identify the hazards at our beaches on more signage, those kind of things, which is something that's come up in the past at Scarborough, for example, with the couple of drownings there yeah, um, in no. Taylor's. And so whether you'd be open to a resolution which asks staff, um, maybe in parks, to work on additional... Not on the end of a notice of motion. So yeah, well, I, I, with the, yeah, exactly. with the notice of motion... My understanding is I can't if, amend if, a notice of motion people anyway. With, well, the, with if, agreement of the meeting, that's able to be done. Yeah, but if, if there, there are people in the room that obviously are not going to support the notice of motion, so I just... I, I, the, the, the standing orders say that you can't... Um, you can't move a, a, okay. a, a foreshadowed motion and we can't do anything can we ask with it. We'll deal with this some additional motion. information on, on that. I, I can look, just, yeah. I mean, I'm happy to I mean, ask it's just, the if question. We, if we're wanting As to address say, the drowning, then th that's... This is, this, is an, this is a lesson, in my view, around the notice of motion process. You know, um, I, I, I know how to right notices of motion so if anyone wants any help beforehand we can actually avoid a lot of these problems ahead of time i, I don't think we could avoid oh, sorry, these problems because that's not the problem that that we have the wording, um, the wording does not actually explicitly state what it is that you're no, asking 
So, um, well, sorry, Councillor Templeton, 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 Templeton is questions. welcome to move another motion if she thinks the notice of motion no, does, isn't broad enough. And it's not today, obviously, huh. but she has the ability to write notices of motions as well if she thinks it's well, not I could, broad I don't enough. need a notice of motion. I could do something else. I'm just wondering if, sure. um, if you know if we've got the capacity as a poll, because there's about 60,000 um, under 15 year olds in Christchurch. Yeah, but the, no. the, no. he, he doesn't know the answer to that question. Um, Yanni? Cool. Uh, it's just a question for staff. Um, I, I've just looked at No, it. there are no questions for staff on a notice of motion. Oh, right, okay. Well, hey, you, hey you, Jay, do you know when the aquatic, um, where the aquatic facilities strategy that Council has has gone on our website and when we're reviewing it next? And did you think about actually incorporating the resolutions into the aquatic facility strategy that's disappeared from our website around the elements of um, dealing with some of the issues that you've raised. With all due respect, I think this is becoming a, a bit question. of a fast. We've got a, we've got a, a notice a motion on table that that our staff to go so away and do some work Yanni, about what we can do Yanni, at council facilities it. to address drowning rates. And people seem to be taking the piss. No, no, but this is exactly but there, what There's no need for that sort of language either. In our aquatic facility strategy. Yanni. Uh, so Yanni, I'm please, asking. I'm going to ask you if you've got a question that's in yeah. order as far as the notice of motion is concerned. So did the mover of the notice of motion consider, consider a strategy? Um, no, did you consider that strategy in your... Strategy review thank you. He said change. no. He said no. Thank you. All right. I'm going to open it up for debate. Tim. Jake, would you... Tim. Sorry? I've oh, sorry. Tim. I've got I've got Tim Scandrit. So apologies, Tim. I can't see you from here. I'll do it's sure okay. Do. Hey, um, but Jake and Melanie, thank you very much for, for putting this forward. As a, the intent, I think, is excellent. And Jake, I can feel your frustration which, where this has been taken. But I think with regards to um, point two, um, the, the wording with regards to, um, to children building skills, etc. I think the real work will be in with working with the staff to see if life-saving New Zealand would be crucial in this because it comes back to the circumstances of where the drownings have happened. And I think that would be an important step within that information that we need to understand where these drowning, where, where the dangers are, rivers, etc. So I think that should be um, included in it, but that's, I think, for another day. But I, I, I will support the, the process, but I do think there are a lot of things with regards to this, because we are a country made up of a whole lot of rivers on a number of islands. And it is absolutely senseless for people not only not to be able to swim, but not understanding the dangers of rivers and our seas, etc. So good, I think there's a lot of work to do here. It's a good point. And hopefully as this work progresses, I'm assuming as part of our annual plan process, we'll get the opportunity to be briefed about how it's progressing and councillors can offer their specific and uh, helpful feedback as, as, that, as that happens. Yeah. And look, I don't care where people learn to swim or learn to understand the difficulties and dangers of water, but I do think the um, Ministry of um, Education and the ACC should be approached and really lift their game as well with us and other councils, because we do have these facilities. We will have limits financially and um, numbers wise, but let, I think it's the intent that you and Melanie have got here is excellent and um, I will be supporting it, but I think there's a lot of work to do here as well. So thanks for raising it, guys. Thank you, Janet. Pauline. Debate? Oh, debate, yes, oh, please. Well, should I open? Oh, sure. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for, um, firstly, I'd like to acknowledge my second uh, councillor, Coca. Together we, like all of you, I'm sure, recognise um, our drowning rates in this country, how tragic our drowning rates in this country are. Drownings are the third um, highest cause of accidental death in New Zealand, and that's why we want to explore options, all options in fact, to do everything we can to address the problem. As you'll see from our wording, as you'll see from the wording of our motion, everything we can do is at our disposal to address this most New Zealand of social issues, including free swims and lessons for all children and young people in Christchurch. While there's a range of reasons behind each tragic drowning, a lack of training and water skill comes up all too often. This package will also explore access so children can put into practice what they've learnt, filling the gap that easily accessible school pools once did. Lots of cities are doing more than us currently and I want Christchurch to lead the way when it comes to children accessing this life-saving skill. 
The goal here is to ensure everyone growing up in this city has the opportunity to become confident in the water and we can truly say financial barriers aren't a factor in our drowning rates. In short, this is an investment in our young people that they will take through their whole lives. If I'm reading the tea leaves correctly, this is going to be well supported. And I think that that would be a huge step forward on this issue by this council. A vote for this today is a vote to say we want to know what more we can do. A voting yes is saying you're not going to accept the status quo when it comes to our drowning rates. Voting yes means we can use the powers of this council to hopefully save lives. Uh, Pauline. Thank you. I'd like to thank um, Jake and Melanie for bringing this to Evelyn. Everyone knows how passionate I am about swimming and pools. And um, this is actually about water safety. There's a lot more benefits, of course, for swimming. But, um, and I also think, um, I really thank um, Jake for allowing the staff time to work up this report in a really robust way because it's a complex one. And I think having time to um, dive into these issues is a really good idea because we've got to look at barriers, facilities, funding. And council's not, not going to be alone in this. We're not an alone council. We embrace partnerships. And I'm sure that will come out of this report as well. There's many people and in, in organisations involved in swimming, including the Ministry of Education, surf life-saving, swim clubs, schools, other community groups. I think if we all pull together, pull our resources, oh, and, um, and we get a really good outcome, and I think this is going to be a really great piece of work that's going to surprise us with the results so I will definitely be supporting it today. Well done. I've got, uh, got uh, Mel and then Andrew. Great. Um, look, the drowning um, statistics this year have been highlighted, obviously, in the press and in many articles. Um, and any step that this um, council can take towards upskilling people in the water is one um, we should all support. I know there's significant community support for this too. And for those commenting that all drownings occur at sea or in rivers, they are forgetting the unfortunate incident that occurred in one of our own very council facilities. School swimming is provided through many schools, but the service is limited and not available to all young people. Swimming lessons at Christchurch City Council facilities cost $10.80 for those under 3 and $13.80 for those under 16. I'm not sure of the cost of private providers because they don't provide their prices on the websites often. But there is a quote um, from this off social media, and someone quoted um, saying, swimming lessons aren't cheap, which is why we haven't gotten around to signing our kids up yet. Now, look, other cities are providing free swimming lessons in various ways. It includes one of our neighbours, um, Timaru District Council. Now, if council is able to facilitate free swimming lessons for those under 12 or 16, this will allow those families who cannot afford the cost of lessons to access a service that all Tamariki and Rangatahi should be entitled to. Um, Andrew and then Aaron. Thank you. Um, I'd like to start by acknowledging councillors McClellan and Coker for putting this forward. Um, I believe this is a perfectly sensible notice of motion, um, asking for a report well in advance of um, decision making required um, so that information can be provided, um, so that there can be a proper consideration um, for the next annual plan. The options and the requests um, that are to be covered in the report appear to be deliberately broad in scope. Um, that will then allow for a broad conversation of options for achieving the outcome sought here, um, which is that access to swimming lessons is improved and barriers to access are reduced. Um, as to the question about what the intention is, I think today's intention is clear, is to ask for a report that allows that debate to happen in time for the um, next annual plan with proper information to support a proper debate um, and to support decision making at that time. Um, looking at um, the outcome that's sought from today's decision, um, how we can address unacceptable rates of drowning, I find it difficult to see why anybody would consider opposing this. Yes, we can do more. Yes, there are probably some broader issues at play here, but at least this is making a start to consider what we can do in this space, and I'll definitely be supporting it. Uh, Aaron? Um, 
Yeah, if, I, I think this council does a lot to uh, uh, keep drowning rates down. We have uh, some really good swimming pool facilities, and I actually support the points that um, Celeste made around we should target any funding if there is extra funding put towards swim lessons. And also, Councillor Templeton raised we should target where people are actually drowning to, uh, to um, address that. Because the way people drown is a big part of how people drown in New Zealand. And males are overrepresented because of a lot of choices they make. And when you look at the stats, which I'm sure everyone has, of how people have drowned in New Zealand, you'll see a lot of what the decisions males were making that got them to the point of drowning. And I've made plenty of those decisions myself in my life, uh, but I learned to swim in a bathtub uh, when I was at Dr Bernardo's at three years old before being taken to the beach and put in the deep end. Uh, I'm still here, which is a surprise. Uh, New Zealand has the seventh largest coastline, as many of you will be aware, but what most of you are probably not aware of, if you didn't look at the numbers, is that since the mid-80s, when drownings uh, were peaked, uh, and that legislation come in that which killed a lot of swimming pools, drowning rates have actually dropped. So it peaked over 200 drownings in 85. Uh, we now average uh, just under 100 uh, each year. The population back then was under 3 million, it's now over 5 million. So drownings in New Zealand have gone in the right direction and will hopefully continue to. Uh, New Zealand isn't badly represented. We're 139th in the world of countries for drownings. Uh, US is one behind us at 140th. The worst country in the world, in case anyone's remotely interested, is Guyana. Um, uh, they have the highest drowning rate in the world. Uh, there is uh, disparities throughout the world for people who can swim. Uh, different countries, people have different uh, swim rates. Uh, there's a misrepresentation between males and females, but the equity is not that bad in this country because New Zealand, along with Australia, shares the highest, I'll say it, the highest rate in the world of people who can swim. Uh, females are 85%, males are 90%. Um, so we should really, if we're going to do anything, only target uh, really specifically target and spend the money well, however that may be spent. Um, and also, I will throw in there that the, when you look at the drowning stats for all of New Zealand, which I'm sure everyone here has done, you'll see that Canterbury is right at the bottom. And yet we're 10% of the population, we're nowhere near 10% of the drownings. We're very, very low. And we have a lot of rivers, we have lakes, and we have a lot of ocean. Uh, so um, let's let the uh, facts uh, drive the um, debate, not the emotion. Thank you. Uh, I've got Anne, Anne, Phil and James and then Jimmy. Thank you. I am supportive of the notice of motion today. Um, it is about um, our concern about drowning, but it is also about equity. And I think if we look at our strategic framework, we want this city to be an opportunity for all and we want uh, people to live in a safe and healthy community. So for me, it's about identifying, this will be a good piece of work to identify those barriers that are preventing people from um, using the pools, the wonderful pools that we have, and uh, getting those that instruction that they need to be, uh, to be able to swim. So I'm really looking forward to the information that will come back that will actually give us an information about what we already do really well in the city in terms of supporting people into swimming lessons, but also to see what we can do better. So um, thank you for bringing this to us. And I think that I know that there was some work done probably 2016, 17 about this. So hopefully it won't be too much work for staff to perhaps revisit some of that and to bring that information to us so that we can make an informed decision um, about this. Thank you. Um, Phil? Thank you very much. Um, I will be supporting this. Uh, I look forward to seeing what the uh, investigation that the staff are going to do. Um, but however, I sort of wonder how much, it, it'll be interesting to see how much it's going to cost because we get paid X number of dollars for all the swimming lessons that we do at the moment. So that any income that we get from that will vanish and we'll have to top it up. Plus the small avalanche of people who will join the, the group. So it may unfortunately end up being one hell of a cost, but I'm, I'm more than happy to um, support this and let the staff do all their investigation. And I thank Jake for uh, putting it out long enough that it's uh, 18 months and staff have got time to do it properly. Thank you. Um, I've got uh, James, Jimmy, Sam, and then Sarah, and then Celeste. 
Thanks. Um, yeah, look, I, I think this is certainly well intentioned, but you know, it, as paragraph one on the resolution states, um, that state, states that it's a, an issue for New Zealand. And, and I think that's the concern for me because, you know, we can't be everything to everyone. And, and I think we have a temptation to do that. And I think one of the failures of uh, many councils is that you tend to have this scope creep where you try uh, and address everyone, everyone's problems. So I think first and foremost, this is a, is a nationwide problem. Um, and, and I think, you know, my preference would be working with government, lobbying government and the Ministry of Education to expand their learn to swim programs would be perhaps better, uh, a better use of, of, of our time and energy. But, you know, we can't lose sight of the fact, too, that we actually do a hell of a lot with swimming pools. We have an incredibly high number of swimming pools and access to, to council uh, facilities uh, than most other cities. I think we spend about $7 million of ratepayer money into subsidising swimming pools, about $2.5 million subsidy into Learn to Swim programs. So, you know, a lot is being done here. And, you know, sorry to state the obvious, but, you know, nothing is free. So exploring free lessons... Uh, is really about exploring how everyone else can pay more to pay for swimming lessons for everyone. Um, we're spending too much, we're borrowing too much as a council, and instead of finding ways to ex expedite or exasperate that, I'd rather that we were working with the government and the Ministry of Education, who quite frankly, in my view, I think are failing in this area, because as paragraph one states, uh, notes the unacceptably high rates of drowning in New Zealand. This is a New Zealand problem, and I don't think the Christchurch City Council ratepayers uh, are, are the bottomless pit to try and solve these problems. So I, I won't support this notice of motion today for those reasons. Thanks. Thanks. I've got uh, Jimmy, Sam, Sarah, and Celeste. Thank you. Yeah, I, I support this one. It's very good because uh, I do appreciate the, uh, the Councillor Jack McLennan, you know, because he has the kind of heart to care for the, all those uh, kids, you know, particularly over the previous year. Why the this uh, drown, drowning the rate, you know, so so high? Probably it's a symptom, you know, some of the area is a problem. It's a symptom before us. And also if we review all the, uh, the strategic framework, particularly regarding the resilient community, particular highlight that uh, our community should be the safe, should be the, the, the healthy the community. But these uh, symptoms need to be remind us we have to face. But now it's just early stage. We request the uh, officers, staff, you know, to feedback to us regarding to the comprehensive report, what impact regarding the facility, whether it's short off, whether uh, it's uh, all those uh, uh, parents, you know, adults couldn't afford to pay those swimming lessons, or whether the you know the have some other financial or this kind of we can waiting for the start give us comprehensive report. But today many is we whether whether we have you know this heart care for the all those kids, care for all the future because all those kids is our future our assets. So that's why I fully support this one. Um, Sam? Um, yeah, thank you. And thank you, Jake, for bringing it to the table. I think regardless of whether we agree or disagree, it's important in you know, a democracy that you can actually come along and share your ideas. So I do think that's good. Um, I think it's, these are always really interesting issues in an election year. And I know it's early in the year, but it will send a bit of a signal, I guess, as to the approach that the city wants to take. You know, Do they want us to be the social welfare department for the city? Or do they want us to be an organisation that delivers facilities where there is a general subsidisation across some points around the general rate? And as James mentioned, you know, you look at the pools already, every ratepayer in the city, whether they're renting or own a home, contribute, you know, between 7 and $8 million uh, to run these pools as they are. That's not even accounting for the additional capital expenditure. You know, the programme alone for our swimming lessons brings in $2.5 million. You know, we need to find that from somewhere. And I think I, I could have lived with this uh, had it been very explicit that actually those savings were found from within the social spending already of council and um, the fact that it isn't I think it's unacceptable to um, purport that actually it will go back out to the council and uh, to the ratepayers and put more on their rates so look I mean you, you look at that and say you know do we want to be the social welfare department for the city or in fact do we want to deliver infrastructure that we can provide equity in terms of balance and and you know I'm I sort of sit in terms of infrastructure infrastructure space the other thing is, you know, you're looking at the private pool providers around the city and the swimming lessons. And I mean, again, I think we needed to be far clearer today. Are they in or out? You know, 
is this going to get to a point where I think, as uh, Councillor Temperton quite rightly mentioned, there will be a, t a call on the capacity uh, and actually the council will end up paying these swimming pools uh, who are actually already being paid for themselves. So I'm just not sure this one-size-fits-all approach is actually the best one. Um, and I think you know we could probably have done it in a more structured way. So look, my sense is that the ratepayers of Christchurch, um, like I said, in election year, are probably not overly keen on this. I could be wrong, and we'll find out in due course. Um, but ultimately, you know, there needs to be a point where we put lines in the sands over the budget, and I'm just not sure uh, this is one where we can afford to remove at least $2.5 million uh, of swimming lessons when actually people are already prepared to pay for them. I'm just going to say a few words because I'm putting myself on the speaking list. Um, the, uh, I want to say that the, the notice of motion process is a very good one because it does enable uh, councillors to raise issues that are of particular concern to them or their residents um, or anyone in the city that um, and they want that they want to pursue. Um, so, so it's a it's a great process that enables um, good quality debate to to occur. Um, but the trouble with a, a lot of these um, notice of motions that I've seen over the years, uh, so just imp you know parting wisdom, um, they often start with the solution rather than the question that was posed in the questions. What is the problem we are seeking to solve? And then what are the options that then might arise from the answer to that question? Um, and uh, if anyone thinks that um, councils are you know, unique in this regard, they're not. Central government does it all the time. Forgets the question one of any quality regulatory impact analysis, and that is what is the problem we're seeking to solve. So, um, and if we don't do that, if we don't ask that question at the beginning, then we end up with unintended consequences. Now, I'm prepared to accept that this request to staff to investigate and report on options is sufficiently broad to cover all of the issues. The reason I raised private providers was that if council was to take an action in relation to its own facilities, then it will have a financial impact on the business model that private providers pay. They currently provide swimming lessons to children and the, the parents pay for them. So, um, you know, I won't be here for the vote, so um, I'm, I'm, um, I'm suggesting to you to look carefully at that and to look at the model where if we did make a subsidy decision, which is what this is, if we made a subsidy decision, then we did not expand that to the private sector when we looked at car parking. So I've just, um, that's just my view. Um, and our, but I do want us to understand what the impact would be on private providers. Um, in our case as a council, we are an obvious source of funding because we own so many pools, but there are others. And regardless of the outcome of this vote, I'll be writing to the Minister of Education about the concerns that have been expressed around this table. Um, I've got um, Sarah, Celeste and Yani. Kia ora, thank you. And um, I completely get the intent of this. Um, and there are many, many barriers to um, children being able to get uh, swimming lessons within the city. And there are many, many different reasons that people drown. Um, my first experience coming into this council chamber was as a member of the public, um, a mother with three small children submitting against council raising swimming lesson fees um, in an annual plan process uh, before I was first elected. It's really tough for families when they've got um, multiple children and, and the lessons go up in price, even with community services card, which is what I had at the time. Um, New Zealand had the New Zealand death is what drowning has been for many, many years, and um, and we play a role as council in helping mitigate that. But we're not alone. The Ministry for Education has clear stuff in their curriculum, and um, but has. Uh, cut resources over time, which has meant that um, school pools are no longer um, as prevalent as they once were. But I'd also like to have seen the, the notice of motion better targeted for equity issues. So if we look at um, Christchurch as a city, we have uh, about 12% who live in the most deprived areas, deprivation index 9 and 10 across the city. But we have 25% who live in the, the um, least deprived de uh, deprivation index 1 and 2. What would we be doing here was charging rates across the city 
to subsidise um, swimming for those who can already afford it and who are already paying for it, whether to council or through to private providers. There are 60,000 under 15s in Christchurch. Um, to give each of them one swimming lesson um, on current council costs would be $800,000 of the operational expenditure. I would rather target funding um, on an equity basis, actually look at the real barriers for people accessing. Some of those barriers will be transport, some will be financial. But I also would have liked us to see the other causes of drowning addressed in this notice of motion. I'd have loved to see um, signage at our beaches and our rivers where people are all the time. You know, say some between the flags. If there aren't flags here, these are the hazards you need to look out for. All of this, don't drink and swim. Mm. All of those kind of messages need to be at our popular swimming spots around the city um, and Banks Peninsula so that people are reminded of these when they go near the water. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Celeste. Um, yes, thank you, um, Councillor McClellan. It's a great initiative um, and I, I support the intention. Uh, however, I think the proposal needs to be targeted at where the need is greatest with a focus on equity and will have the biggest impact. I realise it's just a report for further information. Um, some of the feedback that I've received, I've spoken with um, surf lifesavers and swim instructors, and they agree that we need to do something. Their view is that, of course, many of our young people don't have as access to the same swimming and lifesaving opportunities that we did when we were young. I was fortunate to be a surf uh, a nipper back in Sumner, and it taught me some valuable um, water safety skills. However, it's a complex situation that requires multi-agency support and needs better investments from central government. As other councillors have said, the Ministry of Education should be stepping in and taking the lead role here. So I support the initiative to write to the central government and ask for a, a water safety to be included as a compulsory aspect of our curriculum. They should be taking the lead in educating young, uh, young people about water safety, swimming and life-saving. Um, it's my view that council and the ministry and water safety advocates need to look at the bigger picture and figure out how we can target our resources where it's going to have the biggest impact. Having said all that, I do support this uh, report because it is about getting better information so that we can target that funding in the right areas. I'm aware that that's the purpose of the report, so I thank you for bringing it to our attention and um, figuring out how we can target this money in the right kinds of ways, so thank you. Yanni, and then Mike. Uh, thank you. Um, it, it's really cool to listen to all the questions and the comments that have been made. Um, and I just want to remind councillors, we actually have an aquatic facility strategy, or we had one, can't find it on the website, not quite sure what's happened to it. I think it's going to be reviewed. Um, it's normally up for review every five years. Um, so it's actually coming quite timely that we would get this information. Because a lot of the comments that have been made we actually do talk to that in our strategy. It wasn't just about where we build pool, pools or aquatic facilities. It was about the things we did with the Ministry of Education and with schools and with the community around access to learning to swim, etc. cetera. So um, one of the really interesting things I think is the fact that um, obviously there's been a focus on uh, water safety, particularly with what's happened at the end of this year or over summer this year. Um, and we know that um, not only are men overrepresented, but also Pacifica and Māori people are overrepresented. And so for, for people like me who have campaigned for 20 years to get a pool built in Linwood, that is part of a solution to um, addressing this issue. And I mean, I don't know how, I mean, obviously people, I hopefully heard what the staff was saying about the impact that that pool has had on people's ability to learn to swim. I think they said, they had for the whole year an expectation of 800 enrolments and within the first quarter, I think they had said that they had 400. So they're doing way better than they anticipated and clearly showing that we can make a difference as a council. I am concerned to hear that some councillors are saying we need to choose whether we wish to be the social welfare department for the city or whether we just provide infrastructure. I haven't heard those same comments made um, around the using rates to fund uh, property development within the central city where we gave a huge amount of welfare to some of the richest people in our city to provide housing and yet when it comes to swimming and basic life skills 
we're hearing that maybe it's not our role. And ironically, someone's raised the cost of $800,000 for these uh, potential lessons if this goes ahead. Well, that's at the same amount of money that we're paying to service the debt associated with funding the central city housing that we gave to the private development sector. So um, I just hope that people have an open mind to what we're trying to achieve here. I commend the people that have put forward the notice of motion. I hope that we can look at the aquatic facility strategy too um, and look at the other things that we can do, including working with the Ministry of Education and central government to encourage and get better um, education around people's ability to learn to swim, both in, in pools, but also along our coast and in our rivers. Um, Mike. Thank, thank you. Look, I'd also like to, to thank um, Jake and Melanie for bringing this notice of motion to us. Um, I think it's actually a really important conversation as a council that we need to have to work at actually, you know, what our role is and what we can do to actually help prevent people from, from drowning. Um, I guess, unfortunately, I think the inclusion of 4A, C and D may put a bit of a focus on, you know, providing free swimming lessons for a, quite a significant number of people that potentially could have led to a quite a cost prohibitive report, um, which I don't believe is the intention of what is trying to be achieved. Um, what, what I hope we, we get is actually, I guess, a broad range of initiatives that we could look to put in place to actually um, try and help, you know, people that are, will struggle if they get into trouble um, be able to get out of it. Um, and, and I guess one of the things is, you know, this is a long time frame to be achieved. We need to also see what we can do now. Um, and I think there's a lot of things we can can do, um, but also importantly, you know, this will go to the next council and will actually form part of um, an annual plan consultation. So actually, we can have the conversation with the people of Christchurch, with facts, with figures, and actually let them have a say on what they think is important for for us as a city. Thank you, Jake. Do you want to close that off? Yeah. Um, I can't believe I got caught by the microphone trick. This motion seeks to solve um, a problem using the tools that we have. Um, as Councillor Templeton said, many people often drown in our rivers as well, um, but they learn in our pools and we have a responsibility to um, the safety of our community. There are many reasons, but why not start with the reasons that we can control? Fully supportive of the call to do more, um, and, and more now is part of our upcoming annual plan. And again, I just wanted to state for, um, in case there is any confusion, targeted options are a part of this policy. Um, however, I want universal ones looked at as well. And that's why they're noted here. Um, that noting uh, for something you don't support isn't a reason to throw the baby out with the bathwater, though. The idea that government should solve our problem for us is a weak excuse for an, uh, for an authority sworn to look after the interests of the people of Christchurch. Uh, perhaps government could be doing more, probably that's the case, um, and, and we can ask them, and I full, fully support that, but absolutely it would be wrong for us not to explore what we could be doing to improve the situation. That situation um, is bad. You know, our rate of preventable drowning is twice what Australia's is. Um, so what this, notion, what this motion is all about is about offering provision for those that currently can't access. Um, it's about saying that confidence in the water will now be a right, not a privilege in Christchurch. Right. Oh, oh, well, possibly not required, but um, I'll put the motion. Like a division. Oh, OK. <laughs> Let, Leanne, right. can you put one, two and three separately to four? I don't have a problem with one, two and three. It's just that I want to vote against four. Right. So how do you want to do that? Well, it, it makes no odds because, um, I mean, I, I don't think anyone's going to disagree with um, noting provisions, are they? So I'll, no. put, I'll put one, two, and three together. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed aye. say no. Aye. That's carried with um, Aaron Kewan voting against. Shh. Don't debate the vote. I have called the vote. It has been carried for one, two, and three. Now I'll ask for a division on um, uh, paragraph four, or recommendation four. The Mayor? Aye. Deputy Mayor? Yes. Councillor Chen? Yes. Councillor Chu? No. Councillor Parker? 
I. Was it me? No, I think <laughs> <so>. <laughs> oh, sorry. Monsieur. Okay. Councillor Poker? I. <laughs> what did I say? I. <laughs> you changed your mind now. Councillor Donovan? Yes. Councillor Davidson? I. Councillor Galloway? Yes. Councillor Bob? No. Councillor Johansson? Yes. Councillor Kewan? No. Councillor MacDonald? No. Councillor Major? Yes. Councillor McClellan? Uh, yes. Councillor Sandridge? Yes. Councillor Templeton? Yes, apart from A. <laughs> yes, apart from A. Okay. The note A is a no. That's 13 votes for the motion, four against. That uh, motion is carried. Thank you. Um, kia whakaeria te tapu, kia wātia ai te ara, kia turuki whakataha ai, kia turuki whakataha ai. Homie huie tai kia. Kia ora, thank you. I declare the meeting closed.